Imagine traveling back to the late Cretaceous, searching for a haven from the giant predators ruling the continents. You might set your sights on Hatig Island in prehistoric Europe. Here, no tyrannosaurs thundered through the forests, no carcharodontosaurs roamed the open plains. Even the dinosaurs seemed downsized, sauropods no taller than horses, duckbills no larger than big dogs. At first glance, it looked like a sanctuary, but that illusion would be fatal. Hatzig Island was no refuge. It was a crucible of evolution, a place where isolation bred killers more dangerous in their own way than any predator of the mainland. About 72 million years ago, Europe wasn't the solid landmass we know today. Instead, rising seas had carved it into a scattered chain of islands across the warm Tethys Sea. One of the largest of these was Hatzeg Island, a landmass about the size of modern Ireland. Its landscape was dramatic, volcanic peaks rising over wide river plains that shifted with the seasons, flooding during the monsoons and drying to cracked earth when the rains stopped. The island's climate was subtropical, with forests of conifers mixed with some of the earliest flowering plants. But this wasn't the endless bounty of a continental wilderness. Life here was constrained, resources were limited, and competition was intense. Any animal that ended up on Hotseg had only two choices, adapt to the island's restrictions or vanish, and there was no leaving. The seas around Hotseg stretched hundreds of kilometers in every direction, cutting it off completely from the mainland. The island became an isolated evolutionary laboratory where the usual rules of size, survival, and predator-prey balance no longer applied. Even the rhythm of life itself was dictated by the seasons. In the wet months, rivers overflowed, transforming the plains into vast wetlands filled with food. Herbivores flourished then. But when the dry season arrived, those same animals were forced to gather at the last shrinking water sources. And that created perfect opportunities for predators, whatever strange island-forged predators Hatseg might produce. Evolution responded to Hatseg's limited resources with ruthless efficiency. The island's most famous residents, its dinosaurs, underwent a transformation that would have seemed impossible on any continent. Magurosaurus, Hatzig's resident sauropod, descended from the lineage that produced Earth's largest land animals. Its continental relatives could stretch over 30 meters and weigh 70 tons. Magurosaurus measured just 6 meters long and weighed barely 1 ton. This wasn't simply a case of finding juvenile fossils. Bone histology revealed the telltale signs of adult animals, fully mature individuals that had reached sexual maturity at these diminutive sizes. The island had systematically downsized its giants through tens of thousands of generations of selection pressure. Zalmoxes represented another dramatic transformation. This robust herbivore, built like a bipedal tank with powerful legs and a heavily reinforced skull, measured only 2-3 to three meters long. Its compact, muscular frame suggested a tough survivor, but even its defensive adaptations couldn't change the fundamental reality. It was prey-sized. The island's duck-billed dinosaur, Telmatosaurus, had shrunk from the 12-meter giants of North America to a modest 5-meter length. These creatures gathered near the island's rivers and wetlands, their smaller bodies requiring less food but also making them perfectly proportioned targets for whatever predators might emerge. Each of these evolutionary downsizings followed the same inexorable logic. Large bodies require massive caloric inputs. Continental giants could afford to maintain their size because vast territories provided abundant food and their sheer bulk deterred most predators. On Hatseg, neither advantage existed. Smaller bodies needed fewer resources and reproduced more quickly, essential traits for survival in a confined environment. The island had effectively created a collection of perfectly prey-sized packages, each species optimized for efficiency rather than intimidation. They had no way of knowing that their evolutionary downsizing was preparing them for a fate worse than anything their massive continental cousins ever faced. While Hatseg's herbivores were shrinking, its predator guild was undergoing an even more dramatic transformation. The island completely lacked the massive theropod dinosaurs that dominated continental ecosystems. No creature equivalent to Tyrannosaurus or Giganotosaurus had ever established itself on the island. This absence created what ecologists call a predator vacuum, an unfilled ecological niche, representing enormous evolutionary opportunity. In most ecosystems, Apex predators serve as crucial population controls and ecological architects. Their presence shapes the behavior, distribution, and evolution of every other species in the system. Remove them, 
and the entire ecological structure begins to shift in unpredictable ways. Modern islands demonstrate this principle clearly. When large predators are absent, other species often evolve to fill the vacant niche. The Komodo dragon represents perhaps the most famous example, a monitor lizard that grew to enormous size and developed advanced hunting strategies to become the apex predator of its Indonesian islands. Madagascar's now extinct elephant birds filled a similar role, despite being flightless descendants of much smaller ancestors. On Hatseg, the absence of large theropods created an opportunity that wouldn't remain vacant for long. The island's ecosystem was primed for evolutionary experimentation on a scale rarely seen in Earth's history. Something would have to control the populations of downsized herbivores, and without traditional predators to fill the role, evolution would have to improvise. The vacancy wasn't just an opportunity, it was an ecological necessity. With abundant plant life and favorable conditions, herbivore populations would explode without proper predatory pressure. The island needed a top predator, and evolution was about to provide one from the most unexpected source imaginable. Before the arrival of Hatzig's ultimate predator, a guild of medium-sized killers established the island's baseline level of danger. These creatures, while not individually capable of controlling large herbivore populations, created the foundational threat that shaped daily life for every animal on the island. Balor Bondok embodied the island's tendency toward evolutionary extremes. Initially classified as a dromaeosaurid raptor, this creature defied easy categorization. Standing about two meters tall and built like a prehistoric bulldog, Balor possessed not one but two massive sickle-shaped killing claws on each foot. Its limbs were shorter and more robust than typical raptors, suggesting a grappling predator rather than a pursuit hunter. Recent analysis suggests Balor might not have been a dinosaur at all, but rather a flightless bird that had convergently evolved raptor-like killing equipment. Regardless of its precise classification, its anatomy tells a clear story. This was a specialist killer designed to overpower prey through raw strength and devastating claw attacks. The island's waterways harbored their own dangers in the form of a Lodipusuchus, a 3-4 meter crocodilian that controlled access to freshwater sources. Modern crocodiles demonstrate the effectiveness of this hunting strategy. Patient ambush predators that explode into action when thirsty animals approach the water's edge. On an island where water sources were concentrated during dry seasons, Alodapasuchus held a strategic chokehold on one of life's most essential resources. Additional theropod fragments suggest the presence of other small to medium predators, each filling specific hunting niches. None of these creatures individually posed an existential threat to healthy adult herbivores, but collectively, they created a web of constant danger that particularly threatened juveniles, the injured, and the isolated. This supporting cast of predators established the island's predatory baseline, but their presence only made the island's ultimate evolutionary experiment more remarkable. Despite this existing guild of hunters, there remained room and desperate need for something larger. From this predatory vacuum emerged evolution's most disturbing creation, Hatsagopteryx thambama, a creature that defied every assumption about what flying reptiles could become. With a wingspan stretching 10 to 12 meters, equivalent to a small aircraft, Hatsagopteryx belonged to the Ajdarkide pterosaurs, a group typically associated with long-necked, delicate-skulled fish hunters soaring over ancient seas. Hatsagopteryx had abandoned this ancestral lifestyle entirely. Its skull, measuring nearly 3 meters in length and half a meter in width, represented one of the largest heads of any non-marine animal in Earth's history. Unlike the narrow, delicate skulls of its fish-eating relatives, Hatsagopteryx possessed a massive, robust cranium built like a battering ram. The creature's neck vertebrae revealed the most shocking departure from pterosaur norms. While other giant Ajdark hides possessed elongated, flexible necks optimized for precise strikes at aquatic prey, Hatsagopteryx's neck bones were shorter, thicker, and reinforced with internal struts. These adaptations served only one purpose absorbing the tremendous forces generated by violent terrestrial combat. Bone histology revealed additional secrets. The walls of Hatsagopteryx's skull and neck bones were extraordinarily thick, with a spongy internal architecture that distributed stress across the entire structure. This wasn't the lightweight construction typical of flying animals, but the reinforced framework of a terrestrial predator designed to deliver and withstand massive impacts. Standing fully erect, Hatsagopteryx's head would have reached 5 to 6 meters above the ground, the height of a modern giraffe, 
but armed with a skull the size of a small automobile. Its toothless beak terminated in a sharp, pointed tip, capable of penetrating flesh and bone with devastating efficiency. The creature represented evolution's solution to an impossible problem, how to create an aerial predator capable of terrestrial superpredation. The result was a flying reptile that had become something unprecedented in Earth's history, a pterosaur built for walking death. Every aspect of Hatsugopteryx's anatomy had been optimized for terrestrial hunting through millions of years of evolutionary refinement. Its massive skull wasn't just a weapon, it was a precisely engineered killing instrument designed specifically for the prey animals sharing its island home. The pterosaur's hunting strategy combined the patience of a heron with the striking power of a siege weapon. Like modern giant storks that hunt large prey, Hatsugopteryx would have stalked through Hatsug's forests and floodplains on foot, its enormous head scanning for movement among the vegetation. Its long legs carried it across the island's varied terrain with surprising efficiency for such a massive creature. When prey was located, perhaps a small herd of Zamuxes drinking at a river's edge, or an isolated Magyarosaurus browsing in a forest clearing, Hatsugopteryx would have approached with deliberate precision. Its neck, while shorter than other Ajdarkeds, still provided impressive reach and striking velocity when the attack commenced. The actual kill would have been swift and catastrophic. Hatsugopteryx's pointed beak, backed by the creature's enormous mass and reinforced skull architecture, could deliver impacts measured in tons of force per square inch. Smaller prey like juvenile dinosaurs would have been swallowed whole, their struggles ending within the pterosaur's cavernous throat. Larger prey required a different approach. Hatsugopteryx would have used its beak like a spear, targeting vital areas to inflict maximum damage with minimal struggle. The creature's robust build suggests it could grapple with prey, weighing several hundred kilograms, using its powerful neck muscles to pin and manipulate struggling victims. The pterosaur's hunting success would have been measured not just in individual kills, but in its territorial control of the entire island. A single Hatsugopteryx could patrol vast areas, its presence alone enough to alter the behavior patterns of every potential prey animal within its domain. No part of Hatseg offered true sanctuary from a predator that could hunt both on foot and from the air. The completed ecosystem that emerged on Hatseg Island represented a masterpiece of concentrated lethality. Every environment, terrestrial, aquatic, and aerial, harbored specific threats calibrated to the island's prey species. The herbivorous dinosaurs found themselves trapped in an evolutionary arms race they could never win. Terrestrial movement brought the ever-present risk of encountering Hatsugopteryx during its ground hunts. The pterosaur's massive stride length meant it could cover enormous territories, making any journey across open ground a potentially fatal gamble. Forest travel offered little additional safety. The creature's head could easily penetrate canopy coverage, and its robust build allowed it to crash through vegetation that would stop smaller predators. Aquatic environments presented their own suite of dangers. Allodapasuchus controlled access to essential water sources, while the concentrated nature of dry season water holes created perfect ambush opportunities. Herbivores faced an impossible choice between death from dehydration and death from predation. Even the air provided no escape route. While Hatsugopteryx spent most of its time hunting on foot, its retained flight capabilities meant prey animals could never assume they were safe based on terrain alone. The pterosaur could launch itself into flight to cross obstacles, pursue fleeing prey, or simply relocate to more promising hunting grounds. The island's medium-sized predators filled every remaining gap in this predatory coverage. Bilar's powerful build made it particularly effective in dense vegetation, where larger predators might struggle to maneuver. Other theropods specialized in different prey sizes and hunting situations, ensuring that no herbivore demographic, from hatchling to adult, escaped predatory pressure. Seasonal changes only intensified these dangers. Wet season floods concentrated both predators and prey around elevated areas, creating killing fields where escape routes were limited. Dry season water shortages forced desperate animals into predictable movement patterns that every predator on the island learned to exploit. The result was an ecosystem where survival required not just avoiding predators, but successfully evading an entire community of killers that had evolved specifically to hunt Hatseg's particular prey species. The true nature of Hatseg's prehistoric nightmare remained hidden for over a century after the first fossils emerged. 
In 1895, when Baron Franz Nubcha von Felso Silvas began excavating dinosaur bones from his family's Transylvanian estate, the story seemed almost charming. A collection of miniature dinosaurs living peacefully on an isolated island, their small size a curious evolutionary adaptation to limited resources. Nopesa's pioneering work established the foundation of our understanding. Decades before the island rule was formally described, he correctly identified the Hatik dinosaurs as dwarfed adults rather than juveniles, recognizing that isolation and resource limitation had driven their evolutionary downsizing. His vision of the island as a prehistoric sanctuary populated by diminutive giants captured scientific imagination for generations. This pleasant interpretation dominated paleontological thinking well into the modern era. Hatzig Island appeared in textbooks and popular accounts as an example of evolution's gentler side, a place where competition was reduced and animals could evolve smaller, more efficient forms without the pressure of massive predators. The discovery of Hatzigopteryx shattered this comfortable narrative completely. When Romanian paleontologist Dan Grigorescu uncovered the first giant pterosaur bones in 1978, followed by more substantial remains including skull fragments, the implications weren't immediately apparent. Only when French paleontologist Eric Buffetat and his colleagues completed their detailed analysis did the horrifying reality become clear. The 2002 formal description of Hatzigopteryx thambama, the genus name honoring the Hatzeg region, the species name derived from Greek thambama, meaning monster, marked a complete revolution in our understanding of the island ecosystem. Scientific papers that had once described a peaceful community of dwarf dinosaurs began reading like horror stories as researchers recognized the true apex predator. Each new fossil discovery and anatomical study added another layer to the nightmare. The thickness of Hatzigopteryx skull bones, the robustness of its neck vertebrae, the massive size of its beak, every detail confirmed that this wasn't simply a large pterosaur, but a terrestrial super predator, unlike anything else in Earth's history. Modern paleontology had uncovered evolution's most disturbing experiment, an isolated ecosystem where the absence of familiar predators hadn't created safety, but had allowed something far more alien and terrifying to emerge. Hatzig Island stands as a permanent reminder that evolution's creativity extends into realms of horror that dwarf our darkest imaginings. The island's story continues to evolve as discoveries refine our understanding of this prehistoric chamber of horrors. Each fossil adds another piece to the puzzle of how isolation can transform a sanctuary into a slaughterhouse, demonstrating that in evolution's endless experimentation, some results are better left undisturbed. The scientific community's journey from Nubcha's charming dwarf dinosaurs to the discovery of Hatzigopteryx represents more than just corrected paleontology. It reveals something fundamental about evolution's capacity for horror. When we remove the familiar monsters from an ecosystem, we don't create safety. We create opportunity for evolution to experiment with nightmares we never imagined possible. Hatzig Island reminds us that isolation doesn't breed peace. It breeds innovation and evolution's innovations aren't always improvements from the perspective of their victims. Sometimes the monsters we don't know are infinitely worse than the ones we do.